What up, what up, what up, Fit Fam? It's your girl Natalie, the Keto Bikini Bro. Welcome back to my second episode of Body by Beef. <laughs> my lion diet experiment. Okay, so it has been a week. I know I look exactly the same as I did and wearing the same thing that I was in the last video because I did that video today also. Okay, enough goof. Um, it's been a week on the lion diet. So let's get into what my results have been after a week. Uh, remember my why for doing this. This is not about drastic body composition changes or anything like that. So I'm gonna start out by telling you what happened on the scale, what happened with my body, um, but let's not, let's just temper this and remember that this is not about fat loss, it's not about reaching body goals. Sorry, I gotta angle this down. There we go, that's better, okay. So take this with a grain of salt and I'm gonna have all of the explanation in just a moment. But I did get a crazy drop on the scale. On average, so weekly average, if you followed along with my competition prep series, you'll know that I always share averages because any point in time when we get on the scale, that is not the full story. We need to be able to see what was happening each day with the ups and downs and then average it out to know what we actually weighed that week. So um, I did get an average drop from the week prior to the week that I started, and I do my weeks Sunday to Saturday, so I started on the Friday. So I'm really talking about the previous week and then the week leading through the weekend of the first few days. I'm gonna make sure that I have that right. No, okay, so it's the week, okay, so I did drop two pounds from the week of basically January 1st through the 7th, and I started on the 6th. So the 1st through the 7th, I did go back from, I came back from vacation um, over the holidays where I did have some carbs. So my weight was up more than usual. It was like 115, 116 on the scale. Um, but the average of that first week of the year coming back to carnivore um, was 115. So 115.3 was my average weight the first week of the new year. I started the lion diet on the 6th, so there was a little bit of overlap there, but like I said, that first weekend I was finishing up some things that also had other stuff in them, so my beef with other things. So my real true first day of truly only beef, salt, and water was Sunday the 8th. From, so from January 8th to January 14th, yesterday, um, my average for this week was 113. Um, so that is an average drop of two pounds from one week to the next, um, before I started to after I started. And what's interesting here is looking at my averages, my body fat percentage did not change. It was 17.5% uh, to 17.9%. So we're talking like half a percentage there. Um, my body fat mass did not change at all. It went from 20.2 20 pounds to 20.1 pounds. So basically the same body fat mass on my body. Now, my skeletal muscle mass on average showed that it went from 52.9 to 51.6. So it looks like I lost muscle mass. <gasps> now does that mean I'm losing all my gains by going lion diet? Let me tell you why that's not the case. Okay, so I said crazy drop on the scale, first and foremost, and then I said two pounds. That probably doesn't sound like a crazy drop to you, but specifically from day one, that Friday, where I weighed 116.4, to day eight, where I weighed 111.8, and then the next day it was 111.6, um, I was down 4.8 pounds in eight days. Now that does sound like a crazy drop on the scale, um, now, reality check fam, this is not body fat and this is not muscle mass. This is water weight. This is what we call water weight. This means all the inflammation 
everything that was holding water in my body, holding water in my muscles, holding water in between my muscles and my skin, um, all of the and, and, and inflammation in general um, is going to pull liquid, pull fluids. So all of that, that 4.8, almost five pounds of, of weight loss on the scale was an inflammation reduction, which is why I'm feeling so much better right now. And I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but if you look at my in body, my body composition, it looks like I lost two pounds of muscle mass in that time. That is not what happens, fam. You do not lose muscle mass that quickly. Um, this is just proof that I haven't lost fat because it's showing that it's looking like it's muscle mass, which is just saying when you drop carbs, even if you're from, you're going from standard American diet to, to paleo or low carb diet, you're going from a low carb diet to a ketogenic diet, you're going from a ketogenic diet to a carnivore diet, or you're going from carnivore to lion diet, whatever change you're making, you're dropping your carbs, you're going to lose more water because the carb, one carb molecule holds three water molecules. So you're going to be losing water when you drop carbs out. I went from an average of, it was pretty high the week prior during Christmas because I was allowing myself indulgences. So my average for the week of Christmas, so right before New Year's was 30 carbs a day um, on average. And I was sitting at about 116 on average with my weight. The high that week was 117. When I cut back to carnivore, my average dropped down to 16.6 carbs for the week and weekly average. And then my weight dropped on average to 115.3. And my, and it was mostly in the 114s that week. So you can see that I already dropped two to three pounds of weight just going from, from having carbs to going carnivore again. And then from carnivore levels of carbs, 16 average per day to less than one carb per day now. Um, I'm averaging 0.7 carbs a day. Most days it's 0.3 or 0.9, depending on wherever it's pulling the carbs from in my foods. Um, so that's what that's what's causing these these drops on the scale. Um, so please do not obsess over the scale. Do not do not think that that means body fat. Do not think that that means muscle mass. Even though my body composition scanner, my in body at home system is telling me it's I'm losing skeletal muscle mass. I'm not worried about that. I know where it's coming from. I know that it's water. Um, so it'll be, I'll be curious to see if that shifts at all as now my body adjusts to this new level of hydration. Um, we'll just see. I don't know. Um, but, okay. That's just my little soapbox there. But this is why it's really helpful to start understanding these patterns in, in your eating and, and what's happening on the scale. Okay, now the good news is all of this drop is exactly the reason why I'm doing this. Not to lose weight on the scale, but because I want to look and feel good in my body. And you know what feels good? Not being inflamed. So uh, not being inflamed, not bloated, not uncomfortable, not having trouble digesting, just being able to walk around and feel the way I look, lean and fit and healthy. Uh, okay, so basically I'm back to the weight that I was on peak week for my show, uh, which is actually no surprise because going into peak week, I cut out all the extras and I was only eating steaks. Um, I was still drinking coffee. That's the only difference. On my peak week, I drank coffee, um, but I didn't do it with the added stuff in it. Um, and I was only eating steaks the, the days leading up to my show and on show day. So it's no surprise that all of the weight that I put on post-show was water weight. It was inflammation. So that is powerful to see that six weeks later, I'm now six weeks post-show, without all the junk, real food or not, <laughs> um, I'm really now kind of believing that chicken and pork and um, especially like the, the added things in my coffees, the protein powder with the sweeteners and stuff, definitely added inflammation and added water weight. So it feels really good to be sitting here. Um, it's kind of amazing that six weeks later I haven't put on body fat since my show. 
Um, or a little bit. I probably did put a little bit on. I don't know what I did with my numbers now. Because actually, yeah, my body fat percentage was showing and my body fat mass was showing lower for stage. So, yeah, I think it was a couple of pounds. The body fat mass had gotten down to about 17 pounds on average. And then it slowly came back. So after the show, it slowly came back. One pound, two pounds, up to 19, up to 20. So now I've been hanging out at around 20 pounds of body fat on my body. So three pounds of body fat since the show, not really a big deal. I'm sitting around 18% and I was at like 15% on stage. So that's all good. That is healthy body fat gain. So I'm in a happy place. And now the goal for this year is put on muscle without adding more body fat to my body. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about what I'm eating, my macros. Um, I am tracking macros. I get this question a lot on carnivore or on lion diet. Are you tracking macros? Yes, I am. And I'll tell you why. Two reasons. Number one, I once again, I said I always want to be in my power. I can't be in my power if I don't know if I'm not aware, if I don't have the knowledge of the things that I'm doing. So awareness is very important. Even if I wasn't trying to hit any particular macros, it would be important to me to track what I'm doing so that I know what I'm consuming. I wanna have all the data, I wanna have all the information to be able to report back on and not be guessing about anything or making assumptions about what's happening without having all the knowledge. So that's number one. Number two, I am still in a reverse diet with my coach. So. Post-show, we have been reversing these, slowly adding fats back, which basically adds calories back to my um, consumption. So we're doing that carefully so that I don't put on excessive body fat too quickly. Now, my fat is still pretty low for what I like. I like to be closer to one-to-one -one on, on fat and protein. My protein is, is pretty high, um, 160 grams per day of protein. My fat is is assigned still at 75 grams per day. Now, that's kind of tricky to do with an all beef diet. I've been eating like 96% lean ground beef and I'm still most days going over my fats. Um, some days I didn't hit my protein, other days I'm way over my protein. So I'm trying to find like the happy place of where I can actually mix things correctly to hit those macros. So it's been pretty tricky for me um, I will say when I send my update to coach this week, I will be asking for another increase um, because as you can see, like I've been maintaining so beautifully and, and dropping the excess water weight and just feeling and looking great. So he's been happy with where we're at. Um, so I'll let him know, you know, look, I've been eating some days upwards of a hundred grams of protein and I'm not gaining any body fat. I'm not gaining weight on the scale. Um, you know, Feeling good so I think he'll be on board with that I'll probably increase our, my fat again um, but as you can see like I have macros to hit but I'm not I'm not neurotic about it I'm not like oh my god what am I gonna do um, one of the beautiful things about doing this lion diet is that you know when I was in prep I was more neurotic about my macros because I kind of had to be it was it was the plan to get us to where we needed to get by a certain time frame so it would be like, oh my gosh, I need more protein. Like, let me eat a bunch of egg whites or let me make a protein ice cream because I gotta hit my protein and I'm low for the day. It's nice to have the freedom with this way of eating of saying, well, I've eaten nothing but whole food, nutrient dense red meat today. If I missed my protein or if I went a little over on fat, I'm just gonna let it be what it is because maybe I don't have it. Like I'm not gonna ever have anything in this house that is 100% protein and zero fat that's beef. That just doesn't exist. So I'm either gonna, if I'm still, now I get to actually listen to my body and say, well, am I, did I eat enough today? You know, if I didn't hit my protein, do I need to eat more? And if I eat more, I know that's gonna put me over my fat, but am I, do I need that? Or maybe I'm full, I'm satiated, I feel great. Well, then maybe I just don't worry about hitting the macros today. So it is allowing a little more intuitiveness with, even though I'm still tracking my food, if that makes sense. 
Um, and it allows me to have enough data to then bring to my coach and say, hey, look what I've been doing and look at the results. I think we're okay to bring out my facts. So just a little tidbit there. Okay, um, training, let's talk about my training. So tr I was still training through this transition. Um, we're back on a muscle building plan. I'm out of my pump workouts now. Uh, and I gotta admit, training was not great. So people who are always downing keto and downing carnivore and saying that you can't do this and train at high levels because you can't uh, perform at high levels on these kind of diets, this is the kind of thing they think of when, when they say those things. They may make the change for a week or two and they see that they get performance declines. And then they say, keto is not gonna work for high level athletes. Carnivore is not gonna work. You can't do it without carbs. The fact is any dietary change is going to change your body. It's going to change the functioning of your body. It's going to take a transition period to, for your body to find homeostasis with the new way of eating. So this doesn't matter what the change is, any change is going to cause your body to need to readjust. Your body is always seeking homeostasis, balance. So it's always gonna be a little bit of a transition and you cannot expect that you're just gonna all of a sudden get massive gains by doing this. Um, and you have to take those performance hits with a grain of salt knowing that in a week or two weeks, you'll be fine. Now, I also have to caveat this and say, if you watched my post comp um, episode, which was the last episode on my comeback series, I talked about how I'd been in a little bit of a funk with my training lately. So mentally, I wasn't fully there with my training. I wasn't feeling it. And that also carried over into last week. So this was not like purely performance hit just from going into the lion diet. I also removed caffeine. Remember that I was going through those caffeine withdrawals. I did have one day of pretty bad headaches, um, but other than that, it was a pretty smooth transition coming off the caffeine. I also got my cycle. So I was in that luteal phase, in that PMS week before my cycle started, and then leading into my cycle and then getting the, the cramps and the, um, the insomnia and the things I typically deal with. So I did take extra rest days. I took recovery days in between every single training session over this last week. And I didn't, my, my training days were not my best. But as you can see, there were many factors, many variables, and it wasn't just because of the lion diet. Um, I'm hoping and I'm expecting that this week I'll be able to ramp it back up. Um, I'm now in my follicular phase, I'm through my cycle, so this follicular phase, that, that week after your period, ladies, is like when your strength is the highest, your strength and your energy um, and mood and all of those things. So it's like your power week. So I really think that this is gonna be a great week in the gym. Um, I'm feeling good with my energy and my mood and also I'm in the mindset of being very intentional about the things that I'm doing. So changing my habit of procrastination um, and that played in big time with my training because I was procrastinating and then by the time I got to the gym, I wasn't feeling it. So nipping that in the bud, I think will make all the difference this week. All right, let's talk about my biofeedback, the symptoms, the things that I experienced throughout that week. So I did have an adjustment in my bowel habits. Um, this is a very common thing when going carnivore or lion diet to have loose stools. That did happen um, all throughout the first week and then it tapered off. So toward the end of that first week and over this past weekend, it is not happening anymore. Um, really smooth transition, much smoother than when I went carnivore initially last January. That took, I want to say a couple of months. It was like January, February. I was having um, intense pain. I do remember one time with my cycle, just really intense pain at night for nights. We had no idea of what it was. Um, we were eating turkey at the time and I do think that my gut doesn't respond very well to turkey, so it could have had something to do with that. Um, but this transition was a lot smoother than my initial carnivore transition. So I think I'm out of the woods on that already. Seem to be digesting really well. I do hear 
the digestive noises like at night, especially after my last meal of the day, it is just like all the gurgling in the world is going on in there. And it's like, it could be unsettling, but I just know this is my body breaking down the food. So I let it do what it wants to do. It's not causing any problems, um, but it is a little noisy. <laughs> Um, one big thing is that I'm no longer adding apple cider vinegar to my water. I was drinking my water all day long with apple cider vinegar in it. I would put, I would do my big jug in the morning and just pour a few splashes um, into my water jug in the morning, drink that all day long with my electrolytes, and then I would take an apple cider vinegar shot. I would do a little splash in a shot glass with some more electrolytes that I would take with my meals along with betaine HCL, pepsin, and pancreatin. I get a supplement that has all three of those in it, um, which is basically hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes, pan pancreatic enzymes, that help me break down my food. I do this because I have low stomach acid. I actually went to the doctor, I got this tested. Um, you can do an at-home test to uh, see if you have this, and it's not like, clinical so if you do the at-home test and you think you have low stomach acid you can go get it tested um, they'll give you like a baking soda solution and then they they show you a graph of what's happening in your stomach um, but you can do a baking soda test at home to try this so uh, I will link below to a video that Bronson and I did on our less glove more fist podcast um, YouTube channel and we show you, we both did it on the video, so we showed you how it works. Uh, he clearly has plenty of stomach acid. I clearly do not um, from the results of that test. Uh, and it's, it's uh, along the lines with my clinical results. So uh, I will link that below if you want to test out for yourself. Um, but low stomach acid is going to make it very difficult for you to digest proteins. So especially with any meal that has a bolus of protein, which all of your meals should, you should be eating little snacks that don't have any protein. Focus your meals around protein. Anyway, I digress. Um, it can be difficult to digest. So for me, I was experiencing that I wouldn't be full at the end of my meals, but three or four hours after my meals, I would be stuffed, just uncomfortably bloated full, um, which basically meant that my stomach was not emptying. I had slow gastric, gastric emptying. And that is because I did not have enough acid in my stomach to break down my food. And uh, another aside about this, for those of you who are dealing with things like acid reflux, GERD, and you're working with a gastroenterologist, and they're telling you that you do not, that you have too much stomach acid, and they're putting you on these omeprazole, Prilosec, these medications to lower your stomach acid, that is what caused this problem in my body. So I highly encourage you to get a second opinion. Go see a functional doctor, a um, functional medicine practitioner, because we have to stop settling for these things, these medications that are only making us sicker. That is what caused all my issues with my stomach acid being low because for years I was on those things because I had GERD from, I want to say I was like 16 when I was diagnosed and I was on that stuff until I was in my 30s. So um, definitely get a second opinion. Okay. Uh, but that feeling is going away. I'm no longer using the apple cider vinegar. I was using the apple cider vinegar to help break down the capsules so that I could get to the hydrochloric acid and the enzymes that were in the capsules I was taking with my meals. I have done away with the apple cider vinegar and I'm doing really well. And my next plan is to start cutting back on the dosages of my um, capsules so that eventually I can phase them out. That would be the dream of this, to end up being able to eat without having to take any supplements for digestion. So yay. Um, another thing I've noticed is I'm already noticing a shift in my circadian rhythm, my energy throughout the day. Um, waking up without an alarm most days. Um, yesterday was the only day this week that I woke up with my alarm, um, but I'm definitely noticing that I feel more alert in the mornings. Um, I'm hungry in the mornings. I used to not, I mean, the week leading up to this um, experiment, I was not eating my first meal until like one o'clock in the afternoon or later. And now that I'm not drinking my coffee in the morning, um, I am hungry by 10 a.m. 
And a lot of the time I'm pulling meat out of the crock pot that we had in overnight at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. And I'm ready to eat a full meal. So I have been eating my meals earlier in the day. I have been stopping eating earlier at night, which is also a huge benefit to this. Um, eating late at night and then going to sleep is going to disrupt your sleep. So I do think that, and this is all in line with our natural rhythm. This is the rhythm we're meant to be on. Waking with the sun, um, doing our productive activity during the day, and then winding down in the evening. We shouldn't be eating large meals after sunset when our body wants to slow its processes down because then you're not gonna digest and you're not gonna get great sleep. So I'm really enjoying this new cycle. I'm not forcing myself into any windows of eating. I'm not forcing myself to do any kind of intermittent fasting, but my goal was with this, I did wanna eat earlier in the day and stop eating four hours or so before bedtime. And so that's kind of just naturally been happening, which is really cool. Um, Another thing that's really powerful is I'm shocked at how I'm not hungry. I eat that first meal and I can go for hours for the whole day. I've basically been eating two main meals a day um, and I can go, you know, six hours in between and I feel great. And then I get a twinge of hunger. It's not like I'm starving by the end of the day. So that has been huge. I haven't felt that probably since I first went keto many, many moons ago. So it's been a long time since I have had that kind of satiety and it's amazing. Um, although it's also a little sad because I love to eat. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm getting to sleep really easily at night. Um, for a while there I was taking cortisol management supplements to help lower my cortisol at night to get to sleep. Don't need those. Already off of those, not using those at all. Um, I do still have insomnia with my cycle, so that's something that I'm hoping improves. Um, I am surprised how little I miss my coffee and my protein treats. It's like out of sight, out of mind. I don't know. It's I'm not looking for them. I'm not craving them. I'm not missing them at all. And that completely shocks me. I thought that would be the hardest part of this experiment entirely. Um, uh, and that's <laughs> Bronson making farting noises at me because he misses his coffee immensely. Sorry, babe. Hopefully you'll get here. Um, now this is really, what did you say? <laughs> he cannot wait to bring his coffee back in, y'all. I'm a little scared to do it because I don't want it to bother me and then not be able to have it, but we'll see how that goes. Um, that remains to be seen. Okay, this I think is the most fascinating part of this whole thing is that I do still find myself getting up looking for a snack throughout the day. And the last few days we've had carnivore snacks in the house. I ordered five bags and we went through all five bags in less than a week, probably about a bag a day. And I found myself in the kitchen snacking on carnivore snacks, which if y'all don't know what carnivore snacks are, they are the most amazing, crunchy, crispy, thin sliced meat. It is not like jerky. It is salty and crispy and amazing and creamy. It has the fat on there and it's like dessert. It is amazing. Um, so it's very tempting knowing that it's in there. But I also just noticed this was a habit in between tasks, in between projects, especially when I'm like working intently on something and then it's like a little overwhelming um, or if I get bored or I just need a break in between client calls or something, I will just get up and look for something to snack on. And it just brought home the concept of this snacking stuff, y'all, is what's killing us. Like there's no need for it. It's not about the food. It's not for physical hunger. It's not for a need. You're, if the need your body has when you're looking for a snack, it's likely looking for a break, a pause, a rest, a reset, something to just interrupt what you're doing to give you um, a moment of peace or calm or energy. You're looking for something, a change in your state, and you're going to try to seek that 
from food. So that was a powerful eye opener for me is how much I still do that. Um, so I know that I'm very aware that I don't need the snack because like I said, I'm incredibly satiated on this way of eating. Um, so now with that knowledge and that awareness that that's what I'm doing and I'm not buying any more carnivore snacks for the rest of this experiment because I don't want to just feed that habit. So now when I get up looking for a snack, we're not going to have snacks. We're only going to have meals available to us. Um, I think it'll be enough of a trigger of, oh, look what I'm doing. I need something else. Maybe I need to go stand outside and look at the sun for a minute or take a few breaths or jump up and down or lay on the couch or do something to break up my day and then I can get back to my task and be focused. So there's a little tidbit for you. The, this is the power, y'all, of changing our environment to drive more mindfulness of our behaviors and our choices and our actions. If we had a bunch of snacks in the house, I would just keep grabbing the snack and probably wouldn't notice that there's a need there that's not being met. So I encourage you to see what's behind these actions that you're taking, these habits that you have created. Okay, almost done. Bear with me. Okay, so this whole experiment is about my greater vision for who I want to be and how I want to show up in the world. Living, acting, and moving with intention in all things. So, there's nothing wrong with un unwinding, you know, turning on the TV or doing something kind of mindless, playing a game on your phone, whatever. Um, scrolling through TikTok. There's nothing wrong with that, but I want to be intentional to the times where I need to have that break and give myself some fun, something to laugh at on TV or a movie night or something like that. So I want to tune into my life and not numb out. That's what we're doing when we turn to food or we're binging Netflix and we're just not even engaged. We're just checking out. That's not the way I want to live my life. So that being said, this week, another big thing changed. No Netflix. This week, I didn't turn on the TV while eating dinner or mindlessly watch something on Netflix all night and, and lose sleep. Um, Friday night, we had our at-home date night and we did a movie night and we watched a movie on Prime. And that was nice because it actually felt like something to look forward to or something different in our week. And now it's not just our default mode. Um, so you can totally have those things in your life, I'm not saying like, oh, I'm better than you because I'm not watching TV or whatever. But it is true that the most successful people are not checked out of their life. They are tuned in. So even if and when they do have leisure activity, it is purposeful, intentional leisure activity. It is not just existing in life. That's not fun. That's not what this life is meant to be. We're not meant to just exist. We're meant to live fully. So overall, so far, I'm thrilled with the way this lion diet experiment has been going. It is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And I am super, super excited about the next five weeks, what this will bring as I'm flexing for you right now, because I'm loving having all the excess inflammation off my body and seeing my muscles and feeling like I did on peak week. I would love to just live here. This is, this is where I want to live, y'all. Building, get the gains without the fluff, and, um, and optimize everything. So, lion diet on. If you are with me on this, if you're doing the lion diet experiment yourself, Drop a comment. I would love to hear how your experience is going. If you're doing World Carnivore Month, um, tell me about your experience. Are there any things you want to hear about with this experiment that I haven't touched on yet or that you want to hear in my next update video? Drop me a question. Drop me a comment. Let's chat. Let's make this a community thing. Um, lift, eat, meat, sleep, repeat. <laughs> I'll see y'all next week. Peace out.